saw your a bio on Amazon. I thought it was very impressive and extensive and complex. So congratulations. You're kind of like a, a woman of many talents over a long period of time. Uh, so why did you write Sally's Way in particular? I remembered doing community television at a marginalized community in Port of Spain called Sea Lots. Um, and as we came in with our cameras and so, you know, we, we could tell that we were a bit out of place, but once some of the guys who were around the Domino's table approached us and say, well, you know, what you're all doing here kind of thing, we said what um, our ambition was really just to find out what everyday life was like there, to talk to everyday people. They really welcomed us very warmly. We felt very um, at home in the environment, very safe. And as we stood there chatting, cameras rolling, an army of kids came pulling a giant makeshift wagon filled with bottles and um, buckets. And clearly they were charged with the mission of filling up the daily water at the standpipe and taking it back to their homes. Yeah. But they were not doing this. There was no sort of drudgery in their body language and in their interactions. Um, it was really beautiful, very, very joyful, you know, and um, that sort of inspirational moment when you just sort of see everything in slow-mo and ta-da, and you just feel, oh, there's a story here. So the idea of um, Sally's Way was really sort of many threads coming together and then trying to put that into the opportunity of having to write for a stepped reader, you know, so looking for universal themes that were not already told in these specific local or Caribbean ways. So um, we'll get to some of the themes. Um, like I was interested in capitalism. I know you want to talk about that. <laughs> I'm not a socialist, by the way, although I'm social cleaning. Um, I, I kind of want to talk about the men in the novel, which I find so interesting and, and refreshing. I know a lot of people have criticized them as being like Disney men. Um, there's no badness in them. Can you talk about the men? Yeah, so not a novel, <laughs> maybe a, a, a novel could have been or would have been, but a stepped reader, a simple story, hopefully well told, but, but um, the men, too. yes, we did yeah. create a feature family and, film from it. And actually, I'm doing most of my research on the film, so if we can just kind of like focus on the film, that would be great. What about yeah. the men in the film? So the men in the film um, really are men that I know. And they're very close to, they were typecast, they're very close to the actors that were cast. And um, they're, they're good men, they're great men in their own domains. They're each very different and unique from the other. They're each having a, um, an experience of Trinidad and their community and fitting together in a way that's very beautiful. And I know that we have gotten really accustomed to seeing negative portrayals of men, men of color in particular. But remember my target audience is ages eight to 15. And if a creator or writer can't dream for kids that age, then I don't know um, wh what space allows for that, you know? So being able to bring um, all these beautiful men that I know who speak this way, think this way and act this way into you know, one scene, one storyline, I thought was um, authentic, you know? And just not really um, common enough. Right. And should be because it's really much more commonplace than not. So, I mean, in the patriarchy, men have been demonized and probably rightly so because we've done so many horrible things. Let's admit it. Um, but isn't it also true that um, sometimes you have to look far and wide for like positive, uh, normal looking, nice guys doing, you know, <laughs> normal, nice kind of things in lit uh, film and literature in general. Or actually, there is conflict in here, but it's not, it's not kind of conflict that you can get between guys, which is often violence or sexual or has to do with, you know, yeah. crime or money or something. So this co conflict that we have in the, the film has more to do with poverty and uh, dreams. Circumstance, and, uh, yeah. Agency. Because there's right. inner conflict in all of us. You know, right. even if externally there seems to be none, there is in a conflict. And why does conflict have to be so exaggerated, overly dramatic? Why do we pull that thread of the story and amplify right. that alone? And I'm, I'm not saying that other people shouldn't, but that's not what I felt or feel to do, you know? Well, isn't part of the beauty of Sally's Way is that these guys, Dan and Marvin and Mr. even Mr. DDL are kind of like Mr. Rogers people of, they're, they're guys, 
you wish you had maybe in your life if you were a kid. Like, you know, maybe this guy doesn't live here anymore, but in this book, this, these people live here and they're really nice. So, these, you know, maybe you could think in your mind if you're a young person that there are really good guys out there that just like maybe you haven't met them yet or... Uh, well, I feel that even fathers, teachers, um, uncles, cousins, brothers who are not always their best selves, are sometimes in front of children and children in need responsive to their to a better part of themselves. Right. But those are, the, those are the those are the people we typically expect to mentor though. So what's interesting about Dan and Marvin and Mr. Danielle is that you may not ex they're just ordinary people in the community. So you might not expect them uh, to be mentors or other other yeah. I have done a mentoring program for a couple of years with the Rainbow Rescue um, home here for teenage boys ages 10 to 18. So I think this stereotype is um, not necessarily because they're positive. We say, oh, that's stereotyping. People aren't like that. I, I don't think that that always holds true. I, maybe we're stereotyping the negative part of being human. You know? So Joanne, you did say something that kind of caught my uh, mind. You said um, you were creating stereotypes to counter the stereotypes. Mm -hmm. You said that, right? Yes, absolutely. Because I encountered these objections in myself when I was writing the story, writing the screenplay. I encountered um, these objections, not so much in a stepped reader, but in the screenplay play and the filmmaking and with the um, sort of mentors of that process that, you know, you typically would go through. And um, my feeling was, so, okay, so if these are viewed as stereotypes, let's use the stereotypes to break the stereotypes. Yeah, but why don't we just flip the script and let people show up as their best selves in this moment for Sally? And right. that is absolutely true sometimes, some way. And actually a lot of that good news is what um, becomes so popular on the internet. People love to see these heartwarming, real life, true stories. Right. And um, it's funny that um, truth is stranger than fiction. But when you say, when you do bring that truth into fiction and people say, oh, that can't happen. That never happens. <laughs> what, what about Mr. Dindial? Dindial. 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 Yeah. Um, He's, he's like an Indian Trinidad, right? Like yes. My wife is Sri Lankan, by the way. She's okay. Indian. Um, it's their stereotypes about um, that ethnic group in Trinidad also, right? Yes. And um, here he is crossing cultural, maybe a boundary between the Afro-Trinidadian and him, his own family. He's able to transcend uh, and reach out and, and bring this girl into his home. Which Absolutely. Is pretty amazing. You want to talk about that? Yeah. So the Dindial hardware is a hardware in my my actual community that I grew up driving by. And um, the Dindial family and the hardware itself, I were great supporters of the book and the film. And um, I didn't model the fiction on, you know, Mr. Dindial uh, per se, but definitely that. Everything in the book, one, I wanted it to be realistic fiction, or as Tony Hall described it, social fiction, okay. um, so that our audiences, kids who are not accustomed to seeing themselves in books or on screens, it would be familiar and it would be authentic to us, and it is. Um, Mr. Dindial um, has, a, in the film in particular, um, has a moment with his wife who represents more of a stereotype and more of a norm that you would expect. But he is able, as again, to pull his better nature out of himself and just do the right thing. Goes, I mean, he opens his house up. I mean, he goes yes. beyond. Uh, he, he, he grows. He has personal growth. He has mm -hmm. spiritual growth. He has, uh, he's, he's helped people in his family grow. And as a man, a lot of times these women, these roles of personal growth, uh, these moral roles are usually uh, given to women. Men don't get a lot of moral yeah. roles. You know, I you... was a, I was a student yeah, of the school. I was a student of the School of Practical Philosophy in Trinidad for several years. Yeah. And oh my gosh, the school is filled with amazing Trinidadian men, Afro, Indo, and everything else, and who. Um, are endeavoring in a way that is so, repre is so representative of um, our better nature and that Mr. Dindial really, especially in a film, represents. Um, 
So I know what is typical, what is typically represented. I'm not minimizing that or those problems. I'm not saying they don't exist, but that just doesn't feel like what I set out to do. Okay. You know, I set out to write and create for a particular audience. And okay. there's an innocence or innocence in us all and in children that has not been championed. We didn't have books and films. Um, filling up our minds with our, you know, you talk about Disney, but we didn't have anything that looked like us, it sounded mm -hmm. like us. So and so I just felt this was a great gap and that's where I wanted to fill it. That's what so I wanted to fill. Were you reading you know? British literature? I think you mentioned Roald Dahl and some others. Roald I mean, Dahl, great, yeah. Great, you know, great, growing up. Writer, but not a, a Caribbean writer. So it's kind of no. like uh, uh, Wordsworth and the Daffodils and having to read these poems that have nothing of snow. It doesn't really you know, it's, it's really beautiful because we had a very sort of outward looking um, period in my lifetime. I can only speak, of course, for myself in my lifetime. And you learn so much and that's OK. But then at some point you start to say, but where is there's a gap? There's something missing. And hey, what? It's me and it's you and it's Mr. Dindy Allen and it's death. And it's where are we? You know, and um, that started to come into my consciousness a lot when I was a classroom teacher. But as a child, Yes, I was reading the, the norm um, of the literature of the time, the global literature that was being imported, you know, and when we grew up, I remember being very heavily influenced, of course, by the British, everything yeah, British, and then, yeah, and then it became American, particularly with cable TV, and all of that is great, all of that has its place in the world, but, but what local. about us? But what about uh, us? It's not local. You know? Hello, my name is uh, Frank Flanagan. I'm a professor at the University of Puerto Rico. And I contacted Joanne Gill Johnson uh, because she had a, a book I was interested in, uh, a so-called step reader for young, uh, young readers uh, called Sally's Way. And there's a particular part of the book that I was interested in, a thematic concern, which was um, other fathering. So um, other fathering is similar to other mothering. It's uh, men in the community who are not biologically related to a child who come in to uh, fill a role on a short-term basis or in a kind of limited way of uh, being a mentor to that child. Um, and a lot of times these men uh, aren't celebrated or understood or showcased. And I felt like Sally's Way, Sally's Way did that. And um, you know a lot of the stereotypes about men in, the, uh, in general and in the Caribbean and men of color are pretty negative and oftentimes involve uh, violence and uh, negative sexuality. And this uh, book is not like that. So I was immediately attracted to the uh, very positive uh, role models uh, that uh, Arthur Johnson was able to portray.